Hi everyone and welcome to the video. So in this video I'll be going through a demo of what was shown at the Location Analytics session at the Canadian Association of Journalists Conference in Ottawa this past April 2017. So this video will go through how you can incorporate different data sets into ArcGIS Online as well as how you can perform some analysis. So before we begin, let's look at the data we'll be working with. So here I have a CSV file of some crime data from the city of Winnipeg. So some information I have here includes a report date, the type of crime that occurred, as well as some location information. And here as I scroll through the CSV, I can see that there is a lot of data. Now this can become quite difficult to actually understand what's happening in the city. So what we're going to do is we're going to map out this information. So to map out all this information, we're going to use ArcGIS Online, which is a cloud-based platform that provides easy-to-use tools, maps, and content for creating and publishing your stories as maps. So before we start mapping this out, you may be thinking, why do I have to map it? Well, whenever you look at a map, you inherently start turning that map into information by finding patterns, assessing trends, or even making decisions. This process is called spatial analysis, and it's what our eyes and minds do naturally whenever we look at a map. So to begin, we are going to go to the right-hand corner at the top, and we're going to click on Sign In, and add in our credentials, and then click the Sign In button. And once we've signed in, we are here now into our ArcGIS Online account. So now I'm going to click on My Content to go to our content page. So the My Content section here kind of acts like a file explorer, but on the cloud. So you're able to store and manage your data right here. So the first thing I'm going to do to ensure that I organize all my content correctly is I'm going to add in a new folder for our new data. So I'm going to click on the New Folder, and I'll add in a new folder name called Winnipeg Crime Data and click create. So now that the folder has been created, let's go ahead and add in some data. So clicking on the add item, I'm going to select from my computer and choose where that CSV file is that we're going to add in and then click open. So now we just have to add in a little bit more information. So I'm going to change the name of this data set to Winnipeg Crimes and add in some tags or otherwise known as keywords. So let's add in crime and let's add in Winnipeg. Also, you can also go ahead and choose your location fields. Here it's automatically detected the latitude and the longitude. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that and click on add item. So after clicking on add item, we end up at the items detail page for this specific data set. So from here we can do some more configurations including adding a summary and description, but we're going to go ahead and start mapping. So on the right hand side we're going to click on open and map viewer. So all the crimes have been automatically added onto the map. We can also see here that smart mapping, a capability within ArcGIS Online, has analyzed our data to provide us with a way to visualize and understand our data set. Here the crimes are symbolized as points and color coded based on the type of crime that was reported. If you wish, you can go ahead and change the way that you symbolize the points, but I like the way this looks so I'm just going to go ahead and click on done. So now, just by adding in the points and visualizing what the data looks like as a map, we're already able to analyze and identify patterns of crime within the city. So already we notice a pattern of increased crime reported in the northern end of the city compared to the south, which could be hard to visualize looking at just columns and rows in a spreadsheet. So before we start doing anything else, let's save our map. So I'm going to click on the Save button at the top give our map a title, so crimes committed, well, let's call it crimes in Winnipeg 2015. Let's add in some tags here, so let's do crime in Winnipeg and also a short summary. So I'll say crimes committed in Winnipeg, Manitoba in 2015 and click save map. Next, let's start analyzing our data. So I'm going to click on the analysis button here, which will now provide us with an array of analysis tools ready to use with our data. 
So what I'm going to do is just go through a couple of tools within the tool set here. And just so you know, in case you're unsure about a tool, there is a little tool tip that gives you more information about each of the tools. So under the find locations, these are the tools that find features that pass any number of criteria that you're going to specify. So they're typically used for site selection where the objective is to find places that satisfy a multiple of criteria. So for example, I am interested in finding all the residential break and enters within the city. So what I'm going to do is use a find existing locations tool to do that. So just some more information specifically about the Find Existing Locations tool. So this tool selects existing features in our study area that meet a series of criteria that we specify ourselves. ArcGIS Online is very helpful. There are tooltips with each step to help guide you. And there are also diagrams at the top of with every single tool that helps you visualize what that tool will do for you. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the data set I want to query through, and it's going to be my Winnipeg Crimes data. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an expression. So it, my expression is going to be where the master type or the crime type is going to be a unique value that I can choose through. So here it's going to be the break and enters from the residential and click add. And that's going to be the only query that I'm going to do for now. And now what I can do is I can change the name of the resulting uh, layer that's going to show the results. So I'm just going to rename this to residential break and enters. And then click on run analysis. So the next thing I'm going to do is start changing around the symbolization so I can see my resulting layer a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off my Winnipeg crimes layer here and already I can see where the residential break and enters are occurring. Next, what I'm going to do is click on the change style icon to change the symbology. So the first thing I'm going to do is keep the locations as the attribute that I'm going to show. Next, I'm going to click on options and symbols. And the first thing I'm going to do is just change the symbol size to be a little bit smaller. And as well as I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to just do a red fill with a darker red outline. And then click OK. And now I can better see my points. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click OK again and done. So the next thing we're going to do is incorporate another data set into this existing map. So here I have the open data website from the city of Winnipeg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the neighborhood data so I can see exactly where the residential break and enters are happening in a specific neighborhood. So I'm going to go ahead and click on neighborhood. And then I'm going to click on export and I'm going to export this as a shape file. So automatically that's been downloaded. So I'm going to see where it is saved in my folder. I'm just going to copy out this link. Now back into my map, I'm going to go ahead and add in my data. So I'm going to click on the add data button here. And I'm going to go to from a file. I'm going to choose the file. So I'm going to paste in that exact location of where it's saved. Click on the neighborhood zip file, click open, and I'm going to import my layer. So now already smart mapping has started to map out and visualize my neighborhoods based on the name of the neighborhood. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it as show location only. And then go ahead and kind of re-symbolize this as well. So I'm going to click on options, symbols, and from here I'm going to start playing around to see how I want to change my fill in my outline. So if I would just the fill, I'm just going to change the outline color here to something a little bit more darker. And I'm also just going to change the line width to be a little bit thicker. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click on here to the transparency. Just make it a little bit more transparent. Then click OK here and done. Next, I'm just going to bring the neighborhoods one level below so that way I can see my break and enters on top of the neighborhoods. So now what I can also do is click on each of the neighborhood boundaries and a pop-up will show up showing more information. So here I can see that it's a Robertson neighborhood. So what I also notice here is that that's not really a lot of information about the neighborhood. So what we're going to do next is in the analysis tools we're going to use the data enrichment tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit the pop-up, click on analysis, and then on to data enrichment. 
So in Data Enrichment, this is a tool that helps explore the character of your areas. So here, detailed demographic data and statistics are returned for the chosen areas. So now specifically about this enrich layer, this is a tool that enriches your point or area data by getting facts about the people, places, and businesses that surround your data locations. So the enrich layer enables you to answer new questions about locations that you can't answer with maps alone. So for example, what kind of people live in this area? What do the people like to do in this neighborhood? Or what are their habits and lifestyles? And also, what kind of businesses are there in this area? So the results would be a new layer containing all demographic and geographic information from a given data collection. So now let's go ahead and add more information to our neighborhood layer. So and click on the Enrich layer here. And once again, remember that in case you need some help along the way, there are tool tips to help you. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the layer that I want to enrich with new data. So for that, it's going to be the neighborhoods. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my variables. So for this one, I'm going to be choosing, let's look at senior citizens in each neighborhood. So let's go to H. I'm going to click on the H variable here. And now from here, I can look at the drop down, and it's by five-year intervals. So I'm going to select all the seniors, 65 and older. So here's the females, and I'm going to do the same for the males. So once that's all selected, I'm going to click Apply. Scroll down, and I'm just going to click on Run Analysis. So my analysis is complete, and my new enriched neighborhood has been added in. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my original neighborhood layer. And I'm also going to bring my residential break and enters to the top here so I can better visualize them. So the way that we move our layers here depends on how the layers are going to be drawn on the map. So this is called the drawing order. And so the analogy that I like to use for this is using it with cake. Because who doesn't love a great food analogy? So you can think of the area of polygons here as kind of like the pieces of cake. And you can think of the point features as sprinkles. So if we were to put the sprinkles on top of the cake, we're able to see the sprinkles. Now if we were to put the cake on top of the sprinkles, we're not able to see them properly. So that's why I always like to put my cake down first and put the sprinkles on top. So now what I can start doing is exploring my new enriched neighborhoods layer. So I can do it one way by clicking on each of the polygons and then seeing the information through the pop-up window. So we can see here that there are a lot of senior citizens living in the Sargent Park neighborhood. Another way we can look at this data is by exiting the pop-up window and opening the table. And here we can see more information as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this table off now. I'm just going to explore this map on my own now. And I can see here that there's a lot of break and entering happening in this area here. Let's go and see if there's any seniors. Oh yes, there are quite a number of seniors living in this area as well. So let's just explore a couple more areas to see if this is a pattern. So let's click here. And we can see that once again, where there's a high number of senior citizens, there's also break and enterings happening. So that might be a pattern that's worth uh, kind of investigating more. So now let's just explore some areas where there is not a lot of residential break and enters and see if there's um, any difference in the amount of seniors living in that area. So let's click here and we can see that with the decreased amount of residential break and enters, there's also a decreased amount of seniors living in that area. Also, let's explore this side of the map. And it looks like these conclusions are quite true. So this is definitely something that we can investigate more. And this is all just by looking at patterns on a map. So what we can really see here is that the power of spatial analysis can really help us understand our world better. So next I'm just going to go ahead and close my pop-up and save my map. So once it's saved, we can go ahead and start sharing our map. So I'm going to click on the share button here. And right now my map is only private to myself. So what I can do next is share it publicly by clicking on everyone. I can also share it within my organization or within groups if I'm collaborating with somebody else. 
And finally, you can also take this web map to the next level by creating an app. All you have to do is click on the Create a Web App button, and here you'll see a wide selection of the various configurable app templates available for you. So now just to conclude, we have added data from various data sets to create a web map. We have also uncovered more information by using some analysis tools. And we have also explored the power of spatial analysis. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to check out our description box below for more information and resources.